Good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show, where we are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only live past crazy specialist, so what better place to be than here with me? Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, good morning. Hope everybody is ready to get this day, get this morning started. Um, I hope everybody slept well. Hope you had a great evening. Um, because, oh really? Happy anniversary to us. How about that? Has it been a year? Good Lord. I didn't know it had been that long. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. I hope you are having an amazing day so far. Excuse me. And you are ready to get this morning started. And I'm going to, it is, yes, it is Working Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. It is Working Wednesday. And I've got to get a move on. For those, I think I shared with Margaret and uh, Val, because of them, my purpose partners, my aunt passed away. So I'm actually getting ready to hit the road and travel. So after I do some work. So it's going to be, it's going to be a long day. But it's okay. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. We are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. I'm going to be quick today. I have a good, fearless thought of the day for you. First of all, if you're, let me go ahead and share the friend. If your friends and family don't have uh, Facebook, then they can, uh, you can uh, binge watch the YouTube channel. I'm going to post that there. So that's already posted. And then don't forget, um, I have, um, on April the 10th, you can pre-order my ebook. It's five ebooks total, and you can pre-order them. And they uh, that's the link for them right there. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning, Jocelyn. Um, so it's a five book e-series, and so each book is a different topic, and then $19.99 for all five. The first one is mental detox, the second one is how to get past the nose of you. Three is building your inner confidence, part one. Six, I mean, number four is six easy steps to power to change. And then the fifth one is walking in the unique expression uh, of yourself. Thank you, Jocelyn. How are you? I hope you are, you're safe out here in these streets. Um, so that is um, for pre-order up until the 8th. So it's $19.99 for all five books. Uh, and you will get the book on the 10th. So make sure you share that as well. All right, so I'll be quick with the fill list off for the day. So I, I read while I was thinking this, and um, I was thinking it, and then it kind of hit me like, yep, that, that's it. So have you ever... Okay, so here's the fill list off for the day. Take the risk in not believing that you're crazy. Take the risk in not believing that you're crazy. So if y'all if y'all read book one, if you if you've been with the Fearless Morning Show for them for a minute, or if you know my story, y'all know the shower story where I stood in the shower uh, for, and I'm not ashamed to say that probably for two years I didn't bathe. I just stood in the shower and said, I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. Yeah, believe that I was not. Take the risk in not believing the crazy. Take the risk in not believing the crazy. Let's not believe the chaos that is ensuing constantly that may be causing you to act crazy, which is going to tie back to yesterday's thought uh, where we're talking about just what if, you know, just what if and make room for your answer sometimes you have to acknowledge even though i say always check yourself 
that perhaps you may not be the one who is crazy and that somebody else may be bringing the chaos to you and just what if you took the risk and not believing what they said about you what if you took the risk today and you did not believe what they said you did not believe how they treated you you did not accept what they told you you didn't accept how they treated you what if today you took the risk and not believe in the crazy what would happen what would happen if you took the risk and you did not believe the crazy today just what would happen nothing would happen to them but for you everything would happen if today you took the risk not to believe the crazy because okay let me let me let's do some let's do some confessions and conversations here let me help you understand the mind of a narcissist an abuser whatever you want to call it before they ever hit you they have control over your mind so now you are always thinking about what they're thinking and you become a thinker of their thoughts and they're going to set you up for failure every single time and even when you're really good at knowing what to say what not to say how to keep them just right here is never going to last ever it's, it's just not everything that you do is to an abuser or a narcissist if y'all don't know who that is google it trust me some of us are married to them they're our best friends they're our husbands our brothers and with some places we may be them ourselves whatever it is that you do is always going to be tied back to them it is always going to be your fault why everything is going wrong it's going to be your fault why they're not right it's going to be your fault why they hit you it's going to be your fault why they cheated on you it's going to be your fault yes absolutely they will get you sideways in two seconds it's always going to be your fault as to why everything is continuing to be crazy everything from the dinner you make let me tell you my abuser told me it's my fault i was big and if i wasn't so big then he wouldn't have to hit me and he wouldn't have to go on the internet and search for a new wife because it was going to be my job to train the new wife because you know i was just too big and he couldn't love a big girl and if I just grew my hair out long enough, if I just stopped eating my nails, girl, let me tell you, and they, they can make it all your fault. And there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to change their mind, make you feel better about the situation. Because here, here's the thing. We can love that person. Like, oh, but when he's not beating me, but when he's not cheating on me, but when he's not, but we are always behind the eight ball. I'm always waiting for that moment to hit. And why, why am I, and why are you always the one living in that state of anxiousness? That state of, oh, I don't know what he about to do. So let me stay right here. I don't know how he's going to react. So, you know, let me put, let me get my hair done. Let me get my makeup done. Let me put some lipstick on. Let me make myself look better. It's never going to work. The per, the craziest person in the relationship controls the relationship. So the Phyllis thought of the day is take the risk and not believing the crazy. Take the risk and don't believe what he says about you. Take the risk and don't accept the situation. Take the risk and don't believe or accept that this is all that you can have. Hey, even Jesus did it. Thank you, Margaret. Take believe in that today. Take the risk and not and don't believe that. And that's gonna, and I know that may be crazy to understand or crazy to comprehend or to think that you cannot believe they're crazy because you have been trained to believe they're crazy for so long or to accept it or to live within it, to adjust your entire life around it. You have built your entire life around your crazy. Miss Margaret, Miss Valerie, if you're on, give me the Bible scripture 
about the thorn in the flesh. It was Paul, I think it was. But I, I'm going to tell the story different, so you might not want to reference that. So think about, and I think I've used this example before. Think about your thorn as your crazy, okay? We're going to substitute crazy in there. And think about it like this. You have a broke leg, okay? And you know how they, or a broke arm, either one, pick one. You know how they put the cast on and you can't move. So during the period that you have a cast on, you accommodate your living area for a moment. You temporarily change your living area so that you can move your arm or so that you can extend your leg. You know, you got to get in and out the car. You might have to have a ramp. You might have to get in bed different. You're going to have to take a bath a different way. But then you get you you get so used to your arm being bent and adjusting for that leg being straight and adjusting your life that you never change it. So when it comes time to change, you're like... I mean, it's been straight for so long. It's been like this for so long. I don't know. So now you continue to build your life around that handicap, which is your crazy, which is your crazy relationship, your crazy friendship, whatever it is. Now you have to accommodate when you go outside. Well, I can't go here because I can't get my leg in. Well, I can't buy this new car because I can't get my leg and my arm in. Well, I can't get this house because I can't do that in there. Well, I can't eat here because I can't do this with my leg and my arm. Well, I can't go out and I can't wear this because... And pretty soon, you have accommodated your entire life around that thorn, that broken leg, that broken arm, that crazy... Please follow me because I know what I'm talking about. When I tell you, I know what I'm talking about because I know crazy. So you have accommodated your entire life for this crazy. And so when somebody comes along like JoJo and who am I? Just a little girl from Far City. And I say, take the risk and not believe in the crazy. You're going to say, JoJo, you're crazy. My entire life is built around this crazy. So now you want me to restructure my life? I have changed how I think. I have changed my how I speak. I have changed my children. I have changed where I live. I have accommodated my entire household to encompass my crazy. So now you're telling me you want me to change that? Well, then if I change that, JoJo, if I change my crazy, then I'm going to have to address all the things that I changed my crazy for. And maybe that's too much work for me to do. Maybe I'll continue to deal with with the broken leg and the arm and accommodate my crazy because it's too much work for me to think that it can be some other way. Because if I think about changing my crazy, if I think I can take this cast off and I can extend my arm instead of keeping it bent, or if I can take this cast off and I can actually run instead of walk because you're crazy, you're crazy, it. What's the word I want to use? Support your handicap of not taking responsibility for what you know you need to do in your life. Somebody please write that down so I don't forget. You're crazy. It's become your handicap. So you don't have to take responsibility to do what you need to do in life. That simply means if I can say my husband crazy, my family them crazy, my mama them crazy, I can always use that as an excuse as to why I'm not going to change my situation. So I can always complain about it and do nothing about it because the end result is I want your sympathy because some of us are addicted to telling the story about crazy as well so that we can get the end result of telling our story. I liked saying my husband was crazy. Oh, Jojo, what's wrong? Well, he did this. Oh, my God. Now I got your sympathy. Now you're feeling sorry for me. Or oh, I'm a single parent and it's so hard. Oh, well, here's a few dollars for gas. Here's some money. Let me buy your kids a Christmas present. When we draw the line and start to take responsibility for that, that I don't care if I am addicted to the story and the outcome and the results that I get from it. I don't care what walls I have to break down to remove this crazy. It's coming up off of me. Until you get determined and draw that land in the sun, that land, that line in the sand, my friend, you enjoy every bit of your crazy. You like it. You love it. And you want some more of it. It is some things are real for me. After I left my abuser, it was hell. When I tell you it was hell, y'all don't understand. It was hell. But I was bound and determined that I'd rather have 
I'd rather try to die leaving than die staying. And some of us are so committed to decorating our crazy and making room for our crazy and making accommodations for our crazy that we're going to die in it, never knowing we could have been outside of it. We were just scared of a little work. We were scared of confronting ourselves and why we, what is your intent? What is your intention? And why do you can continue to say yes? We were afraid to ask those three questions. Why you keep saying yes to it? You, it ain't, you ain't happy. Your soul is aggravated. Your children are aggravated. You're aggravating people around you. Again, you have built your entire life around this mode of crazy. If your family crazy, you have built your life around it. And Miss Margaret, we got to be the black sheep in the family. Thank you for writing that down. You have built your entire life to accommodate all the crazies that you know. All of them. And so when somebody says today, take the risk and not believe in a crazy. What if? Like, like what if? What if today I didn't believe that he's when he said I was fat and ugly? Just, just what if? What if today... I really am smarter than what he said. Just what if today I knew that I could accomplish that one thing that has been on my list forever? Just what if? Like, just, we just playing here. What if? Take the risk and not believe in the crazy. You have built your whole life. You have accommodated every piece of that crazy. It has changed your speed. Let me tell y'all something. After I left my abuser... And I went back, I used to work at this place called PPD. And PPD is a pharmaceutical company and we did medical studies and I met some wonderful people there. And I went to visit, uh, we all went out to dinner after I left my abuser. And you know what the first thing they said to me? Yeah, I meet your, you look so bad, you look like death. Like we couldn't even look you in your face, you look so bad. But nobody was willing to tell that to me. And imagine, if they saw that on me, on the outside, what was going on on the inside of me? So when, you, when you're when steady accommodating your crazy, it's going to show in your face, in the way you dress, in your speech, in your talk, how you interact with people. Your crazy is not going to, it's not going to stop voluntarily because it enjoys the cycle. So if you're like me and it was, Exactly. I'm not messing with you. Have got to be determined to understand that you can live outside of this crazy. Your limitations and your boundaries only exist past where you think you can go. Your limitations and your boundaries only exist to the point of where you think you can go. And to get past that point, you got to think, what if? Take the risk and not believe in the crazy today. So if you've gotten the, and I use the analogy of the broken arm and the broken leg, but I think that's a good one too, so that you can visualize, excuse me, had a sneeze. So you can visualize it. You build your whole life, your Whole life is a, let me, so let me give you another confession. So y'all understand that I understand that when I say take the risk and not believe in the crazy, that maybe you can have a life outside of it. I didn't want to leave my crazy. Yeah, my abuser tried to kill me, but I didn't want to leave. You don't know why. Like I said yesterday, I didn't want to deal with the stigma of being divorced. I didn't want to be the stigma of, oh, she, she I told you she married him for her, for his money because she, he was 25 years older than he was, than she was, and she just wanted her sugar daddy, and I had, I didn't want to deal with the outside pressures that were going to come on me, I didn't want, and then I didn't want to deal with the fact, ooh, and then if you, in that crazy relationship, they have taught you very well to consider them first, before you consider yourself, so here I am getting beat up every day, head bashed in, black eyes, Busted lip, hair pulled out, but I'm worried about his ministry. I'm worried about, he's been at this for 30 years, and if I stop, if I leave, am I going to mess up his ministry? That's how your narcissist sets you up. 
That's how your abuser or your crazy is going to set you up. And you don't have to, you, your situation doesn't have to be like mine. You didn't have to be in an abusive relationship. Your crazy could be your family that continues to remind you why you need to stay there. Why you can, your crazy could be your mama who keeps reminding you why you ain't never going to be nothing. It could be your daddy reminding you why you, you can't leave this, this city. Because, you know, we all live here now. Now, if you, if you move down there, now, I, I can't help you down there because cause that's too far. And I, and I can't get down there in a hurry. So, when you need some money, I don't, I don't want you calling me for nothing. Because I told you not to go down there in the first place. Your crazy could look like that. Your crazy could look like the person that cheats on you constantly. But the Lord said, and the Bible said... I should stay with my man. And if I go to the pastor, the pastor's going to say, ooh, I'm going to pray my way through it. But yet your soul is dying every single day because you have to accommodate the crazy. So now, like in my relationship, my husband cheated. So now I'm having to always think. When you go to the bathroom, when, you, when you're at a restaurant and you go to the bathroom, did you wink at the woman uh, on the way back? Did you slip on your number? Who are you really talking to on the phone? Why do you have to step outside the room to take the phone call? Why you always got to turn your phone face down? When I ask you who you texted, nobody in your text get deleted. Why am I always having to accommodate? And you are always having to accommodate the crazy at all times. At what point, my sister and my brothers... Do we take the risk and not believe in a crazy? At what point do you say, yeah, bro, keep on answering that phone. I'm out, deuces. Yeah, I don't care if they think, because here's the thing. People are going to think their thoughts, and that is in your area of concern and not in your circle of influence. Remember that circle of influence and that circle of concern. Circle of concern is where we spend 80% of our time, and those are things that we cannot control. People are going to talk regardless, boo. I'd rather you talk and JoJo be free than you talk and I'm dying. I, I don't want to leave this earth. Lord, help me somebody. I don't want to leave this earth tired, frustrated, angry, sad, and mad because I'm accommodating crazy that's killing me slowly. And I know this is going to be a stretch for somebody, but please listen. Your religion... Or Jesus is slow walking you to your death. Meaning, you going to church. And then that's why I said you can't accept uh, the encouragement. Because we going to church. And I'm all for praying. I have shouted. I have fallen out on the floor. You have laid hands on me. I have the holy oil sprayed on me. I have felt the Holy Spirit. I have talked to Jesus himself. But sometimes when you go to church and you do all the things and you say, Lord, I leave it in your hands, you instantly pick it back up because, you you know, you feel like that's your plight in life, that the Lord wants me to tough it out. And you go to your pastor and he says, well, the Bible says, except a man do this, he shall And sometimes our religion... Our church is slow walking us to death. It, it, it's walking us to our death and we happily going. We praising Jesus all the way to our death because we don't want, because <laughs> church life, I've been a pastor's wife twice because your pastor already busy. He already got problems in the choir. He got problems here and there. And what he don't need is some of his members coming to him with their marital problems and telling him because the last thing he want to do is have a divorced couple in his church and they looking at him as the pastor like, why you didn't counsel them hard enough? Come on, somebody, to stay married. And if you had just stayed with the man and prayed him through it, Lord, somebody, then he would have changed. And husband, if you just accept that wife who out here doing her thing, maybe you can pray her through it. Honey, even Jesus put the crazy people somewhere. Even Jesus took some quiet time and was by himself. 
I'm simply asking. I want you to think about it. And I didn't mean to get religious on anybody. But I'm, I'm a God's girl. I want you to think about this. If I was made in his image and he is the king and I live in the kingdom, I have certain rights. But I also, I also want, you, want you to read the Bible in the context of which it was written and the day in which it was written. And if God meant for me to suffer or to be beaten and to live like that, why would he say, I know my plans I have for you? <laughs> Some people pick and choose what they want to believe. And if, and if that's for you, I'm going to pray for you, my sister. If you're willing to accept that, I'm going to pray for you. I pray your peace abundance and blessings on for your entire life i do take the risk today and not believing you're crazy take the risk today and don't believe just for five minutes that you're not as crazy as your family says you are take the risk for two minutes to think maybe i don't have to live here to make it i, I don't need y'all because your family will have you and there's nothing wrong with family please understand i love mine to death Thank you, Miss Margaret. But your family will have you thinking you can't survive past them. Your mama, your daddy, your sister will have you thinking because they babysit the kids. When you move over there, who, who going to keep your kids? Because you know you like to go out. When you go over there, who, who going to help you with your bills? Because you know you always calling me for help with your bills. Your family will have you believing that you absolutely cannot survive without them and that they are the ones that support you and that they are the reasons why you living and breathing. And my sister, I'm here to tell you, you created a whole human by yourself. You grew a human in your body. You pushed a human out. You raised a human. So you mean to tell me you think it's too hard to think what if you could do this on your own? Take the risk today. And not believing you're crazy. Ask that what if question. What if you did get a divorce? And what if you did leave that relationship? And thank you, Miss Margaret. A to the man. What if you did leave the job that everybody don't think you should leave because you know it got good benefits? That's why I stayed at the hospital so long. Got good benefits. You, you know, you got good money over there. Why you want to leave that? What if today you thought different than you did yesterday? What if you did not believe you're crazy today? Your limitations and boundaries only exist past what you can see and what you think up until that point. And the only reason why you're not thinking any different or you accept those limitations and beliefs because... And here's what habits are. Here's what your thoughts are. This is your, your belief system. This is how your belief system is set up. And if you don't believe me, take a look at your grandma now. And we'll talk about this. So this is neuroscience. Your belief system is simply a series of thoughts that have been reinforced over and over and over again. Thank you, Margaret. When the marriage no longer works, he should write a divorce paper. So if my belief system is just simply a series of thoughts that I have over and over and over again, can I, I then not replace my thoughts <clears throat> and then repeat them over and over again so that they become my behavior, so that they become my new belief system? That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. When I tell you it took time for me to replace all of my ex-husband's negative thoughts with something positive, it took a minute. But I was bound and determined to make it happen. And so when I became, when I decided that, it became my new belief system. So I took the risk of not believing the crazy. I'm not ashamed to say for two years I didn't take a bath. I stood in that shower for two years and let the water hit me. And I would say, and I promise you, these are my words. I'll look out my bathroom shower window because there was a window in there. Good morning, friend. I need to call you. I'm going to call you. And I would repeat, I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. I, and I would chant, I know I'm not crazy the entire time I was in the shower until he knocked on the door and told me I'd been in there long enough. And then I would get out and I would dry off and go on about my business. But I had to have, I want you guys to realize that if you continue to accommodate the crazy in your life, 
if you continue to build a life around your crazy, it's gonna it gets harder to break away from it. It's gonna be hard regardless. But the more in depth you are in it, the more you're gonna say, Jojo, I done built a whole life with this person. I done built a whole life with crazy. I, I've been with my mom and them my whole life. I I've been here my whole life. This is what I've been doing my whole life. I don't know nothing else, Jojo. So what, what you mean? Think about it. What if you didn't believe the crazy for today? I'm telling you, just like the broken leg and the broken arm, how you accommodate for it and you rearrange your life for it, eventually you get used to sitting like this. Eventually you get used to that leg being broken. And so you accommodate your entire world for that crazy. And so the minute you start to break away from it, crazy is going to say, um, wait a minute, we know this routine. I'm a firm believer that your routine habits steal your free will. And I, I can, here, here's how it works. Neuroscience again, and I promise I'm closing the show. Have you ever made it to work and not known how you got there? You came home, you don't know how you got there. You came in, you bathed the children, you did all the things you cooked, but your mind ain't there. You, you somewhere else. Because eventually, your body doesn't need you to participate in your life because it knows at 4.45, JoJo's going to get up. At 5, my feet will hit the floor. By 5.30, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm washing my face. By 6, I'm yelling at the kids. By 6.20, I'm in the car. By 7, I'm at the school. By 7.15, I'm doing this. And it knows my routine because I've done it over and over and over again. So it doesn't need me to participate. And the minute... Jojo says, hey, live past crazy. Hey, Jojo, you don't, you don't have to do that. Or you don't have to think that. You don't have to accept that. The minute my mind thinks something different, your brain, which wants to keep you safe, and your brain, which likes habits, your brain, which is addicted to the chemical of complaining, because it's a drug to your body now, says, wait a minute. We're not complaining? Um, Hello? You normally complain at 8.22 because you're stuck in traffic on the interstate. Hello, at 7.30, you're normally complaining because the kids are telling you at the last minute they ain't done their homework and it's time to take a bath and get ready for bed. Hello, where's the complaining, somebody? And so the minute you introduce a new thought into your autopilot, your body is going to assume that something is wrong. And it's going to tell you, hey, that ain't a good thought because uh, we, we know what you like to do. We have spent years in developing what you like to do automatically. So why are you trying to change now? Well, why, why, why are you trying to, to break us up now? Because I know this crazy. I know when you're going to yell. And I like the chemical that because when you complain, it creates a chemical in your body like a drug and your body becomes addicted to it. And the more you complain, the more chemical you produce, and the more your body lives off of that. And essentially what you're doing is you're recreating your DNA in your body to live off complaining. It is easier to come off a drug than it is to stop complaining. So imagine the hell you're going to have when you start thinking positive thoughts or do something different. That is why, my friend, you've got to end it. And you may say, Jojo, you don't take all that. It may not. This is confession and conversation. This is my story. I pray as my sister's keeper, because I am my sister's keeper, that I share something with you as a seed planter that's going to make you think possibly. Today's thought, take a risk and not believe in your crazy. So for me, it means I had the quotes. It means they are everywhere. They are everywhere. They means that when the first quote runs out of color and the sticky begins to fade. I simply put a new sticky with the same words over it. Somebody's waiting to hear my voice. They will not move until I move. So when I get afraid and think, who am I, Jojo, to share my story? Because I'm just a girl from Far City, which is a small town. Used to work at McDonald's. Hey, the McDonald's family. Who am I to be telling anybody anything? I remember that. And when I ask for more, I remember this. I have no lack. I have only abundance. I receive all of my blessings and my mindsets is always yes. 
And I have these constant reminders because if you're going, if your behavior and your beliefs are simply your thought process that is reinforced over and over and over again, that means you need to reinforce. So every time I have a negative, y'all, and this is how I walk out crazy. Every, thank you, Melanie. Every time I have a negative thought, I immediately replace it with a positive. So now it's to the point where before the negative thought even hits my mind, my brain has already pushed it out of the way. Now, I, I ain't great. There are some days, honey, when I'm all the way negative. I'm all the way down in the, the dumps with all the things. Like, I don't like nobody and I and you ain't going to make me happy. We have those days. And you know what I do on those days? I reset myself. That means my children have learned when I come home and I have learned my triggers of crazy. So when I come home and I go, uh-uh, no, 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 not, not today. I go in that bathroom. And so one of the things that I always close out my show, if you ever come hear me speak, you will hear me say this, I'll make you grab a mirror and you can do this with me this morning. I will stand in front of the mirror. No more I'm going to take a bath. I'm not going to bathe. I'm just going to stand in the water till I feel better. Till there's no more hot water. And then when I finish that, I'm going to stand in the bathroom in front of the mirror and I'm going to say, I look good. I feel good. I am good. Now, when you first do that, you're going to be like, Jojo, you are insane. And you're going to giggle. And then you're like, I can't believe Jojo got me doing this. But the more you do it, like when I'm at work and I'm aggravated and I'm frustrated, I'm feeling down about myself. Now I don't have to get out the mirror. Now I can say, Judge, you know what? You look good. You feel good. You are good. And immediately you're going to start to smile and your mind is going to drift to the good instead of the bad. It is simply how you react to the outside forces. So today's thought is take the risk and not believe the crazy. Your limits and your boundaries only exist at the places where you stop going. You only believe you can go right here because that's as far as you've only been. Because nobody told you you could go any further. I am a space giver. And what we most want is for somebody to allow us space to be great. To let us know it's safe to be amazing. To be great. To think great thoughts. That's why you have your purpose partners. That's why you have your tribe. That's why you have your friends. They say, hey, Jojo, yeah, you, you, you can do that. You can do that. And so I'm your space giver. So if you're looking for that safe place, here it is. Boo, go be great today. You are beautiful. You are so beautiful. You are so amazing. You don't need no lipstick. You don't need the makeup today. You are gorgeous just the way you are. Honey, go live your best life. Because this is what I know. And this is what I had to, this is how you have to get down deep with the crazy sometimes. At least for me with my abuser. And after I left. And I used to beat myself up. Jojo, why did you stay with a man that beat you? Well, why did you stay with him? And I had to forgive myself for continuing to live in that crazy. That's that one. You got to forgive yourself. And then number two. I, you have to, at some point, you know, I talk, I talk a lot of times about checking your ego. But there's sometimes that ego come in handy. And because you're going to have to have a little bit of it to live past crazy. Well, you know what, Jojo? You was a hell of a woman. And that's why he wanted you. That's why he was hell-bent and being in your life. Now, the caveat to that, too, is sometimes those abusers see the weakness in us. And that's the thing that they capitalize. They like both sides. They like the great side of us, but they also like the weak side. So if they can take the weak and let it overpower the great, then we can be the person they need us to be. Because they can't handle all the great that is in you. So they need to focus on the weak that is in you. So then you can accommodate to their ego. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you that's how it works. I'm telling you that's that thought process. Take the risk today and not believe in the crazy. Don't believe that. Don't, don't, my sister. Don't believe that. No, we ain't got, we ain't got no time for believing less than what we are today. Period. From nobody. At all. Nope. Yeah, and that's exactly what they do with Margaret. And that's exactly what will happen, Margaret. 
I'm just saying. So as my sister's keeper, it is my job. It is my pleasure. It is my honor and my duty to tell you to be amazing today. Be great today. Be whatever you want to be. Take the risk and not believe in the crazy. Ask yourself, what if? And if you want to know more about that, watch yesterday's show where I said you got to make room for the answer. And think about what are you capable of achieving. And stretch your mind. Because it, this is, that's what it's all about, stretching your mind to think. And the minute you say what if, your brain, which wants to solve problems, is immediately going to start working on that answer for you. What if today, um, JoJo, you um, didn't listen to him? What if today you didn't call him because you know what's going to happen? You, you know the conversation, what's going to happen. What if today you were just selfish for a minute and thought about yourself, your mental health, your emotional health? What if today... You made accommodations for you. I'm just saying. That's why this is called Confessions and Conversations about your everyday life. Because I want to share how I lived past crazy. And hopefully some tips or some of the things, the exercises I've done can help somebody else. I am my sister's keeper. It's my firm belief that if I can help a sister or a brother who can change their family, We will change our community and we will change the world. Your family is absolutely waiting on you to stop the crazy. They're waiting on you to move away so that they can know that there is more. Because their limit, their beliefs and their boundaries stopped right here at the county line. And the minute you say, what if I cross the county line? They're going to be scared, but secretly they're rooting you on because they didn't have, they, they couldn't go. Because it was only meant to go right here. You're free to go past it. And they're waiting on you. And here's the thing. Thank you, my sister. Here's the thing. Your family wants you to be great. And I don't want you to get... And this is what I had to learn for myself. I can't be mad at my family, number one. of Two things. I can't be mad at them for the expectations that I put on them that they don't even know about, number one. Number two, I cannot get mad at them because they love me to where they can see. My mama, it loves me with her whole heart, but she can only love me just like you you love your children to where you can touch them. And so when you go to their boundaries and their limitations, that's where they can love you at. So when you go over that, they're afraid that they can't keep you safe over here because they only want to keep you safe because they love you. It ain't that they hate you. They don't care about you. They love you, but they can't keep you safe over here because their boundaries and their limitations stop them here. Now, secretly, they are ruining that you go over the line so that you can give them the inkling or the notion to know it's okay. It's okay over here. I made it. They're waiting on you. Y'all know my quote. It's even losing its sticky on this. I had to get some tape. Somebody is waiting to hear my voice and they will not move until I move. Same thing applies to you, my sister. Your family's waiting on you to move. They're waiting on you to leave the situation. They're waiting on you to move past the crazy. They're waiting on you to take that initiative to do the thing. They are waiting on you. And they're not going to move until you move. And you got to be okay with being the person that's going to move. You got to be okay with being the person that is going to change your family. Is it a lot to take on? Hell yeah. It is. But guess what? If you were made for it. Take the risk and not believe in the crazy. Your limitations and boundaries only exist to where you can see. They only stop at the places where you haven't gone beyond. So today, think what if. What if. Just what if. Take the risk. Write it down. I wish I had a book. Where's my little my little journal thing on the jiggy? Hold on, let me show it to you. So for those that don't know, I'm a journal junkie. Here's one that says today. This is another one. This is my dream journal. This is where I put what if. What if, JoJo? This is my action planner. Now my what if, and then I write down. What if, okay, 
So what if that, then let me write down what I could do. Just what if. Dream book, doodle book, action book. I'm a, let me show y'all how junky I am. Calendar. <laughs> I ain't playing. What if. And if you would like a free journal, let me know. I'll, I think I, Kitty Lynn, are you on? I think I saw you pop up. Kitty Lynn got a journal. Somebody else got a journal. What if? Honey, write it down. Here's another one. This is another what if journal. And this one is jam packed. So anytime I need a reminder about what if, I got them all handy. That's my daily mantra over there that says live your life. That one says real queens straighten each other's crowns. That one says is about leadership. That one says go confidently in the direction of your dreams. We ain't got time to be playing in these streets, y'all. You are amazing. You are great. What if? Get you a what if journal today. Go to, go to the Dollar Tree. It ain't got to be about nothing. Go to the Dollar Tree. They got cute little notebooks over there. Get you a notebook and an ink pen. Put it in your pocketbook. And today, write what if. You ain't got to share it with nobody. It's just between me, you, and the Lord. What if. And be bold about the what if. Because when I used to start writing this, yeah, get, get you one. I have so many. My girls are like, don't you buy another one. That's like spitting in the wind. I'm going to buy it. Because I'm going to need it. And if I don't need it, I always send somebody, see somebody. And, and I give them out. People are like, what? I randomly give them out. If you ever been to any of my events, I hand them out there too with the ink pen. It says, thank you, Kitty Lynn. What if? And then if you ain't even got a dollar, because there's been days when I didn't even have 10 cents in my name. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I simply took a piece of paper and I folded it over. What if? And I stuck it in my Bible. What if? Take the risk today and not believe in the crazy. What if? Ask yourself that. What if I was amazing? Love you too, Kitty Lynn. I forgot to send you something. Kitty Lynn, this is what I was going to send you. This right here. And if you guys want um, Be Fearless bracelets, they are available online. Kitty Lynn, please forgive me. I so forgot. Um, I, my aunt passed away. I had a death in my family, so I will be there this weekend. So I may try to meet you. It says Be Fearless. And they come in every color. And these are handmade. So um, whatever color you want, you can order them. If you go to livepastcrazy.com on the store, um, they are there. I am my sister's keeper t-shirts are there. As well as I have a five book e-series that is coming out on April the 10th. Um, and there it is right there. You can get all five books for $19. And uh, I have the topics written down here somewhere. Mental Detox. How to get past the nose of you, building your inner confidence, part one, six easy steps for, um, for, for it to change. And number five is walking in the unique expression of you. And then you're going to get the bonus of the purpose partners where I talk about the importance of the purpose partners. And it's on sale for $19.99 up until the 8th. And you will get it in your email on the 10th. So that's the link for that where you can um, go ahead and purchase that up front. So... Um, thank you. I, and I will definitely let you know. Uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm leaving today. I'm trying to get my whole life together this here day. So to feel the stop for the day is take the risk and not believe in the crazy. Your limitations and boundaries only exist at the places where you stop going beyond. Thank you, Charlene. Today, push your limitations. Push them. And guess what happened? This is what I found out. When I pushed myself to the limit. This is like working out. You know, when you first work out, you sore and you can't even walk because you pushed your body to the limits. That's what's going to happen to your mind when you decide to stop living in crazy and stop accepting what they tell you. Your brain going to hurt. And you're going to think it's going to ooze out your ears. But the amazing thing happened. On the other side of that, I had new thoughts. I had thoughts I hadn't even thought about. I had thoughts that I didn't even know I was thinking about. So, think about that. Miss Mellon, I'm going to call you uh, this afternoon. I think I'm only working half a day. So I'm going to call you this afternoon before I hit the road. Oh, and please, I think I, I text the wrong number 
um, because I have a few people that were trying to reach out to you for more questions. So um, I will text you or I will definitely call you. So today's guys on this working Wednesday, Miss Margaret, please post your link because Miss Margaret today is the the TV the radio show is today, right? Miss Margaret, and she's going to be on the radio today. And Miss Margaret is your job coach. So you can check her out. If you know anybody who needs to live past crazy, send them over this way. I am going to be hosting a retreat in August. Miss Margaret and I are working on that. So if you're interested in that, please make sure you go over to livepastcrazy.com and sign up for the newsletter. I am going to be doing, I'm working on a one-on-one uh coaching thing where we're going to walk this thing out like if you need somebody for real for real with you for real for real with it and you need somebody to help you walk it out i got you boo i'm working on a coaching um, program with that right now so if you're interested in that please go over to livepastcrazy.com and um sign up for the newsletter so and then if your friends and family um Duh. If your friends and family don't have Facebook, y'all know we got a YouTube channel, right? And if they don't have uh, YouTube, we do have. So if your friends and family don't do any kind of social media, they can have the fillest out of the day delivered to their email. And that's the link to sign up for that as well. So guys, I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. Yeah, listen live at 10 a.m. Margaret, the uh, job coach. So if you need help in your career, check out Miss Margaret. All right, guys, I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. I've kept you guys far too long. Like, I got to go. Uh, I hope I've said something that has helped somebody today. Take the risk of not believing the crazy. What if you did not believe what they said about you today? Just what if? And you ain't got to share that with nobody. Just think it in your mind. What if today I'm not fat like he said I was? What if today I look as beautiful as I know I am? What if today, just what if, and if you want to share it with me, send me a message and I'm, I'm going to support you. I am my sister's keeper. All right, guys, I hope you have an amazing Wednesday and I will see you here bright and early tomorrow morning. Love you too, Kitty Lynn. I'll call you once I, I'll send you a message once I know when I'm coming into town. All right, guys, have a great day.